So, so yeah, I do actually have some stuff to do today, um, which I think is going to be really nice. So this is a, uh, it's going to be another application of entropy. Um, well, I think personally, I think this is maybe even a nicer application. Uh, so regarding the poll, so this, the poll is not about entropy, but we're going to use this uh, later. So G is a graph. Uh, G has at least one edge. And we're going to do this weird thing where we're going to pick an edge at random. We pick an edge E from the graph. And then I'm going to kind of, after I've chosen E, I'm going to pick one of the endpoints. So I choose the edge E uniformly. I just pick a random edge. And then I pick one of its endpoints. Um, and then the question is, so if I fix a vertex V, the question is, what is the probability that the chosen vertex is V? So, so basically, X is the vertex I choose. So if I choose that side, then X is that vertex. Um, and what's the probability that X is V? So, um, well, basically, the probability that X is equal to V, or maybe I have a slide. Ah, yes. Yeah, basically, the probability of choosing V, so I think everyone who's answered it has got some variation of the right answer. Um, but, you know, if I, to, to get V, I have to first choose one of the edges incident to V, right? And there's, each of these edges has a one over M chance. <laughs> Don't worry, there will be a one over two M uh, in there somewhere. So each edge has a one over M chance of being chosen. And then given that I choose one of these edges, so suppose I know that this edge was chosen, then the probability of choosing V is a half because it could be either of the endpoints. <laughs> so basically, if you think about it, the probability is like, so each of each of the edges coming from V has a one over M chance, but there's D of V, you know, degree of V edges coming from V. Um, and then, uh, and then, so the probability of choosing an edge incident to V is degree of V over M. And then the probability that you choose, so suppose I already know which edge is chosen, the probability then that I choose V is a half, because once I know I've chosen this edge, there's a, with 50% chance that I choose V, 50% chance I choose the other endpoint. Uh, so it's just degree over 2M. Um, and if you want, remember, probabilities have to add to one, right? So if you wanted like a sanity check here, like if I take the probability that X equals V and I sum that up over all, v, all vertices, like that's supposed to equal one because probabilities add up to one. And it does because of handshaking, right? It's the sum of the degrees over 2M. And the sum of the degrees is 2m, so it's just because m is the number of edges, right? So actually, you could have ruled out a lot of these choices because it wouldn't have the, the probabilities wouldn't add up to one, right? Um, okay, so what the heck does this have to do with anything? But uh, but we'll see later. Are there any questions about this? The poll question. So what we're going to do today is prove the following theorem of Sidorenko. Um, so we're not going to. So the proof we're going to give is not his original proof, um, but this is a kind of newer proof using entropy. So the theorem, so remember this thing about, so this was quite a while ago now, but homomorphism densities. Um, so remember THG is the homomorphism density of H and G, which is just the probability that if I randomly map the vertices of H into G, that this random map is a homomorphism. Uh, remember homomorphisms preserve edges. Um, right, so this, this theorem of Sidorenko says that if T is a tree, then for every graph G, the homomorphism density of T, this tree, arbitrary tree, into G is at least the density of K2 in G, or the edge density, raised to the power of the number of edges of T. And if you can remember back to this stuff in chapter four, you'll kind of recognize that this is kind of similar to ty the type of stuff we were proving back then. Uh, remember we proved, for example, that for any graph G, if you look at, say, the four cycle density, you know, one thing we proved was this, um, K2G to the 4, where 4 is the number of edges of C4, right? And then we proved this thing about even, even cycles, right? That this is at least 2K. 2K is the number of edges in an even cycle. Um, and this is kind of the same thing. And also on the assignment, assignment 4, you proved that a similar thing for KST, right? KST in G is at least this. And this is kind of the analogous bound, but for trees. Um, and probably people maybe don't remember this from back then, but at some point I was saying if we knew about, like if we knew that the P3, if we could prove a result like this about the P3 density, like P3 is a, sorry, P4, P4 is a path on four vertices, not, not four edges. So if P3 
P4 is the path on four vertices. Um, if we could, what I was saying at some point is that if we had this bound for P4, it would immediately give us the bound for C6 by doing a sort of sum of squares thing. Um, and basically this is, yeah, this is that bound that was missing. Uh, we didn't need that because we could do it using linear algebra, but uh, anyway. Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe the maybe the linear algebraic thing. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. But both so both of these things are from yeah quite a while ago now. I think in the 90s at some point. But I'm not sure which came first and whether one was used to, for the other or if they kind of came up separately. But all of these things were proved by Sidorenko at some point. Okay. So I, I said I want to use entropy to prove this bound. So here's the way that's going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a random homomorphism from the tree T into G. Now, I'm not going to pick a uniformly random homomorphism, but we're going to kind of, we're going to kind of build a homomorphism. So T is a tree. So just think of T as being, I don't know, any tree you like, right? We're going to sort of build a homomorphism from T into G in a sort of random fashion. And then what we want to show is that, um, okay, well, first of all, so F is a random homomorphism. What we know about entropy is that the entropy of this homomorphism F, so F is some random, you know, there's some distribution on all the homomorphisms and F is chosen with respect to that distribution kind of thing. Um, so the, the range of F is the set of all homomorphisms. And remember there's this thing about entropy that the entropy of a random variable is at most the log of the size of the range. So we have this kind of inequality where this is this, the size of the range of F because the range of F is the set of all homomorphisms. So certainly the entropy of F is at most the log of the number of homomorphisms, no matter how we choose F, right? It doesn't, I can choose F in any random way um, and this will be true. And the, so then the kind of, what we need in order, so we want to bound this quantity, the number of homomorphisms. So, okay, we're trying to bound the homomorphism density, right? But that's just some function of the number of homomorphisms with, yeah, divided by, you know, this kind of normalizing uh, factor, right? So we want to, basically want to bound the number of homomorphisms. Um, and so what this says is that it's sufficient to bound the entropy of F for some random homomorphism F or some way of constructing a random homomorphism. Right, so, right, so if we can prove that this is bigger than something, kind of the, the correct, whatever is the correct quantity, then we can say that, you know, so it's, this is going to be log base two of something, you know, then we can just say that that something is at most the number of homomorphisms, and then we can kind of uh, play with this until we get the right bound. So, so okay, what, what this comes down to then is constructing a, a distribution on the homomorphisms, which has high entropy because we want to be able to lower bound the entropy by something. And weirdly, so we know, so the thing is we know what, what distribution has the highest entropy. It's the uniform distribution, right? If I just chose, if I choose a homomorphism at random uniformly, we know that that has the highest entropy um, because that's one of these facts of entropy. But weirdly enough, that's not what we're gonna do. Even though the uniform homomorphism, uniformly random one has the highest entropy, we're actually not going to choose it uniformly at random because that would be too hard to analyze. I mean, it's kind of like in Shearer's bound when we're bounding the size of an independent set in a uh, triangle-free graph. We sort of, the idea was to have a, a sort of algorithm for building this thing, which we can analyze, uh, even though it's not going to give the, the best, you know, it's not always going to find the, the biggest independent set or the, you know, it's not going to be an, a uniform homomorphism in this case. It's going to be something we can analyze. So the, the actual random, the way we generate this homomorphism is actually kind of uh, natural. So here's how I'm gonna do it, okay? So imagine this is my tree, T, so just some arbitrary T, tree. Um, actually, maybe I should call it like a shrub or something, you know, like a roseberry, or rosemary bush, right? It's kind of what it looks like um, in honor of, you know, the present, but, uh, but maybe we'll call it a tree anyway. Uh, Rosie the fourth, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay, here's the way we're going to generate a random homomorphism from T into some unknown graph G or, you know, some arbitrary graph G. First of all, I want to pick a root, okay? So I pick a root of the tree, I call it one. So that's vertex one, who cares? You know, it's just some, it doesn't actually, like here I chose some vertex kind of in the middle. It doesn't have to be, 
anything in particular. So any vertex can be the root. So I've chosen it, you know, here in this picture. Um, and then I want to go through and label the vertices in a sort of breadth first search way, meaning that, so I've got, I've got my root vertex one, I go through the neighbors of one, and I label them two, three, four, etc. So in this example, I've got the neighbors are two, three, and four, right? Three and four. And then I go through the neighbors of two, right? So I kind of, I kind of want to start at the root vertex and kind of label the neighbors and then go through the neighbors of the neighbors and go through and label them one by one in a sort of natural order. So I'll start with the neighbors of one. I give them two, three, four. I now go to the neighbors of two that are not labeled yet. So I give it, it's only one of them. So I give it five. And I've got six and seven are the neighbors of three and then eight, and nine, and 10. And if five had a neighbor, I would like a, a further neighbor, I would then give that vertex 11. Uh, and then, you know, if it had another neighbor, I'd give it 12. And then maybe if six has a neighbor, I give it 13. I just go through and, and uh, yeah, label things in this way. Is that clear? Um, let's say, so later, so this number K is gonna keep coming up. So the vertices are labeled one up to K, where K is number of vertices of T. Um, and now I can, for every vertex, so the vertices are labeled one up to K, I can define the parent of a vertex to be the neighbor of that vertex, which is closer to the root. So, and I'm gonna call that P, so the jth vertex, the parent of the jth vertex is P of J. So the parent of two is one, the parent of 10 is four, for example, right? The parent of seven is three, the parent of six is three, this parent of four is one and so on. So, so here's how I, so I've, all I've done is label the trees so far. Now let's talk about how to generate a random homomorphism. Um, and I'll call that homomorphism F. So first step of generating the homomorphism, I just take the root and I map it to a random vertex of G, but where the probability I choose any given vertex is proportional to the degree of that vertex. So in other words, for each vertex V, I define the probability that f of 1 is v to be the degree of v over 2 times the number of edges, which is the same as the degree of v over the sum of all the degrees, because handshaking. So this is kind of, if you think back to the poll, this is the kind of distribution we ended up with in the poll by taking a random edge and then taking a random endpoint. But So this is how I choose f of 1. So if a vertex has degree 10, then the probability of choosing that vertex is twice as big as a vertex of degree five, okay? So that just tells me how to map the root. And now for the rest of the vertices, I sort of do a random, effectively, I'm gonna just do a sort of random walk in the graph, if that makes any sense. Perhaps it doesn't. But the way to think of it is, so I've chosen where f of one is. So one maps here, let's say. All I'm gonna do is to map two, the vertex two, I'm just gonna pick a random neighbor of, of f of one. So this is f of one. f of two is just a random neighbor of f of one. I'm then gonna choose f of three to be a random neighbor of f of one as well. So it could be, so f of three might be over here. I then choose f of four again to be a random neighbor of f of one. It could be the same as f of three, for example, because I'm doing this randomly. I'm not, I'm doing it with replacement. So I might map two vertices to the same vertex. That's okay because it's a homomorphism, right? So that tells me how to do one, two, three, and four. And then I move to five and I say, okay, I want to map five to a random neighbor of where the parent of five is mapped. So the parent of five is two. So I look at f of two and I say, pick a random neighbor. Maybe this is the neighborhood of, f of two has these neighbors plus this one. And I pick a random neighbor. So f of five might go here, for example. Um, f of six could be, f of six could be f of one, for example, right? It just has to be any neighbor of f of three and so on and so forth. So to be more, um, Kind of formal here for each j between 2 and k we just left let f of j be a uniformly random neighbor of f of the parent of j so just pick one out of a hat at random so if yeah if vertex one mapped to a vertex of so f of one had degree 10 then f of two will have 10 choices for where it goes and all are equally likely is that clear so it's kind of a random walk in some sense in the graph um, I'm not sure if that helps though. Yep. Ah, because the parent of six is three. So 
what I do is when I try to map number six, I just look at where is the parent of six, it's three, and then I have to map six to any neighbor of three. And that could be this one, for example. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's right. So in a homomorphism, you need adjacent things to stay adjacent, but you don't need non-adjacent things to be non-adjacent. Yep. It's kind of like when we were picking homomorphisms of like, I don't know, P3 or something, we were t saying it's the sum of the degrees squared. Um, but we, so it's like picking a vertex and picking two neighbors, but we didn't care if those are adjacent or not in, in that co computation. Okay, so, right. So yeah, random vertex, chosen proportional to degree, choose a random neighbor, choose two more random neighbors. So this is just kind of building up the homomorphism. Um, then I would, so I've chosen one, two, three, and four, and then I would choose, yeah, maybe I could choose f of five to be f of one. So this is just another example of how it could go uh, because that's a neighbor of f of two. I've got six and seven here. I've got eight and nine are the same and 10. So anyway, just picking random neighbors every time, basically. So now I've got a question for you. Um, suppose that I, so I, I do this procedure. Um, so remember I choose f of one to be a random vertex. You totally could, yeah. You totally could just get an edge as the homomorphism, like the root could map to a vertex and then every, all of its neighbors could map to the other side of that edge and then everyone else could map to the, you know, it, it could just bounce along that edge over and over, totally. Yeah, so, okay, so my question for the poll then is, uh, what's the, pr so it's take an edge, U, V. Um, actually, it's, it's kind of only if the tree is bipartite, but all trees are bipartite, so, so yeah, the tree is bipartite. So yes, it can it can kind of just jump across that edge over and over. If I was mapping a non-bipartite graph into G, it would be different, but trees are bipartite. So what is the probability that F of one is U and F of two is V, which is maybe a little tricky. I mean, it's a little tricky to guess, but it's actually not that hard to calculate. Um, so, I mean, I can calculate the first thing if I, ignore the second, right? If I just want to know the probability that f of uh, one is u, right? That's just by definition, it's the degree of u over two times the number of edges. Now what's the probability that f of two is v given that f of one is u? So we're, we're imagining, we've already looked at f of one and we noticed, oh, it's u. So if I know that information, what's the probability that f of two is v? Any thoughts? Totally. Yeah, because because we know how we how we chose f of two is just a random neighbor of f of one. So if I know that f of one is u, then any neighbor of any neighbor of u has the same likelihood of being chosen. So yeah, one over degree of u. If I multiply these two things, I get uh, one over two times the number of edges, which is kind of nice because it says that basically any edge. If I look at any edge of the graph, it's equally likely that one and two map to that edge for, I mean, among all edges, all, all edges are equal, equally likely, right? Because, okay, so the two comes here because I'm saying one maps to U and two maps to V. If I switch that to one maps to V, two maps to U, then it's the same probability. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, the pair, you know, so if I look at F1, F2, so that pair is equally likely to be any pair of adjacent vertices. Because the number of pairs of like ordered pairs of adjacent vertices is what is two e g two times the number of edges, and what I've said is what we've proven here is that all of them have you know any of them will have uh, probability one over two times e of g of being chosen is that is that clear but that's that's a really nice property um because that tells us the how likely every vertex is to be f of two or where what I mean is it tells us kind of the distribution of f of two, actually. So, okay, so f1, f2 is just a uniformly random edge of g, but then what that means is that f of two is just a random endpoint of a random edge, right? Because f1, f2 is just a uniformly random edge. f2 has the equal probability of being either of the endpoints of that edge. So f of two is just a random endpoint of a random edge. Um, so by the poll we did before, for every vertex v, the probability f2 is v is also degree of v over two times the number of edges. So that was so that was the probability f1 is v, but it's also the probability f2 is v because 
yeah, because because of the properties of this distribution, f1, f2 is just a random edge. Um, and f, yeah, f, uh, in particular, the actually, it, maybe it's more important, the pair f1, f2 is a random pair of adjacent vertices, which is the same as saying f2 is a random ed, endpoint of a random edge. And yeah, you, you've already calculated what's the uh, distribution when you take a random edge and take a random endpoint, and, uh, and it's this. And this kind of propagates because if you think about it, yeah, if we go to, if I look at F2, F5, right, this edge, I know that, I know the probability F of 2 is equal to any given vertex. It's the degree of that vertex over twice the number of edges. I can then say, okay, what's the probability F2, F5 is a given edge? It's 1 over, or a given pair of adjacent vertices, it's 1 over 2 times the number of edges by the same calculation we just did. So actually it tells us that, like, if I look at any individual vertex of this tree, um, so vertex i, let's say, and I fix a vertex v of g, then the probability i, that i, sorry, this should be not i equals v, but f of i, the probability that i maps to v is just proportional to the degree of v. So, I mean, I'm not sure if any of you have thought about ever or, or heard about kind of random walks in graphs, but you know, if you do at some point learn about random walks, it's because essentially the reason that this works is because the distribution I chose for F1 is the so-called stationary distribution of a random walk. I mean, um, and basically if I take a, if I, if I pick a vertex with this probability and then I walk around the, you know, a certain number of steps around the graph just by choosing random neighbors and I stop at some point, the distribution of the point I stop at will have the same distribution as where I started. It, as the first vertex, it, it uh, it's invariant under taking these random steps. Um, but anyway, you can also do that from the calculation, like we've given. So this should be f of i is u f of j is v. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is just going over everyone's head or or if that's okay. Um, but but yeah, I think that it's instructive to just think of f of one and f of two. Um, so like many of you said in the poll, f one f two is equally likely to be any given edge. Um, and then that means that f of 2 is equal to any vertex with, uh, well, the probability proportional to the degree. But then the same thing should be true of f of 2 and f of 5. Um, and then, or f of 1 and f of 3, f of 3, f of 7, any edge should have that problem. It is very much like a stochastic process, like a kind of Markov chain or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I wouldn't say it's because you can fold the tree into a sink. Um, actually, I mean, there might be something. Actually, no, there's something more special about a tree than that, because uh, if that was the case, then I could prove this for any bipartite graph. But that would be, I mean, I would, if we could do that right now, we'd win some sort of prize in, in, in mathematics, because, yeah, Sidorenko's conjecture is a very difficult conjecture. Um, so any bipartite graph can be folded into an edge, but it doesn't mean that this procedure works for them. Um, okay, let me so ask you a question. So this is sort of separate to the homomorphism for a second. So I just take a uniformly random pair of adjacent vertices, meaning like x1 is a vertex, x2 is an adjacent, a vertex adjacent to x1. And I choose them uniformly at random out of all the pairs of adjacent vertices. What is the entropy of the pair x1, x2? Something, something like that. We have to remember, think, okay, there's a couple things missing there. Something about an edge, yep. So like, the, how many outcomes do I have for this? How many possible outcomes do I have? For x1, x2 has some number of possible. Yeah, so the, so the, the kind of final answer here I'm looking for is log, two, uh, log base 2 of 2 times number of edges. Because if I take an ordered pair, which is adjacent, the number of possible outcomes is 2 times the number of edges. And x1, x2, oh, maybe I should have said like a uniformly random pair. So there's two times E of G possible outcomes. I choose one uniformly at random. So the entropy is log two, log base two of the number of outcomes. So, um, and here's the thing. Oh, sorry, this is a, this should be T here. If I've got a pair of vertices that are adjacent in T, then um, I know that the distribution on F of I, F of J, so I, J is an edge of T, the tree, you know, f of i, f of j is just a uniformly random pair of adjacent vertices. So this has this, this is the same entropy as this. I mean, these are the same, 
like f, this pair f of i f of j is just a uniformly random pair of adjacent vertices or basically an ordered edge. So this should have entropy, which is log two of the number of edges, uh, twice the number of edges, I mean, for any edge of the tree. Because as we've kind of proven, uh, this is just a, a uniformly pair, random pair of adjacent vertices. Okay, so now we can use our kind of um, things about entropy to break up the entropy of F. So F is a random homomorphism. The entropy of F, by the way, you can think of as being the entropy of the tuple F1, F2, dot, 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 up to F, Fk. And using this conditional entropy stuff, we can break this up into a sum. So the kind of the amount of information we get from the tuple F1 up to Fk is the amount of information we get from revealing F1. And then the additional information we get from revealing F2, once we know F1, and then F3 given F1, F2, all the way up to, you know, Fk given everything that came before it. But now here's the key is that, okay, imagine I'm, so I pick this vertex one to map somewhere. I pick where two maps, and then I pick where three maps, and, I, and three is a uniformly random neighbor of one, of where one mapped. And the thing is, when I pick the, where three maps, I don't care where two mapped. Like that doesn't affect my choice in any way, right? Each vertex is chosen to be a uniformly random neighbor of where the parent went. So when I go to choose f of three, um, so if I say, so there's a, a slight subtlety here. I can't say that, so f of three is not independent of f of two, okay? Because wherever two mapped, three would have to be at distance at most two from it. But sort of, if, I, if I'm in a world where I already know what f of one is, then knowing f of two is irrelevant for telling me f of three because it doesn't change the distribution. So, so f of three is chosen. So if I know what f of one is, f of three is chosen independently of f of two. So the entropy of f of three given both of those choices, f of one and f of two, because if I know f of one, I don't really, f of three is not affected by f of two. This should just be the entropy of f of three given f one, because literally f of two has no effect. And if you, if you were to do the calculation, like with how entropy worked, works like from the base definition, you'll see that, yeah, because f of two does not uh, affect the choice of f of three, for example, we can choose them to be the same vertex. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have any effect. Given f of one, um, this will hold. So actually every single term in this sum up here can just be written as like the choice of f of some vertex i given Sorry, h of f of i given the parent of i, f of the parent of i. Because once I know the parent of i, the choice of f of i is, it only depends on that, and not the other previous verti vertices. So that's all a kind of long and probably confusing way of saying that the entropy of f is just the entropy of the root, the f of the root, plus the sum over all the other vertices of the entropy of f of i given f of the parent of i. And this is because of this way we kind of chose these things in a sort of, like was said in the chat, like a, like a stochastic, like a Markov chain. I mean, we chose f of i only given the information about the parent and ignoring the rest of the tree. So this is true. But now I'm going to use what we learned before, which is the fact that uh, if I look at i and the parent of i, I actually know what the entropy of this tuple is because it's a uniformly random pair of adjacent vertices. It's log two of twice the number of edges. And it's also, so it's equal to, you know, I can break this up into um, the entropy of the parent of i plus the entropy of uh, f of i given f of the parent of i. So this is just one of these facts about entropy that we wrote. So I'm taking out the second term here instead of the first, but hopefully it's, you know, it doesn't matter. So if I kind of rearrange this and solve for this conditional entropy, um, so starting here and, and here, let's just solve for this, it's equal to this. We're, we're actually done um, with this proof except for some algebra. So, okay, so what we've got here, too many brackets, yeah, I agree, my bad. Um, yeah, so what we've got here is, okay, F is some random homomorphism, yeah, yeah. Pi would be a better choice for the parent, the notation for the parent of i. I agree. Uh, okay, so h of f is at most the log of a 
of the range of f. So you have this. Um, as we've proven, this is actually exactly equal to <laughs> the entropy of f1 plus this. So summed over k, uh, i equals uh, 2 up to k. k is the number of vertices in the tree. Um, but all of, remember, all of the vertices, the image of all the vertices of the tree, like f of i for all i, they all have the same distribution, or fj or whatever. I mean, remember, we proved that for every vertex of the tree, they have the same distribution, that it, the probability it's equal to v is just the degree of v over 2 times the number of edges. So these are all the same. So this, I mean, essentially all of these I can just write as h of f1, because it doesn't matter which vertex I choose. I can just make it F1. So, so then I get kind of minus, so I get K minus one of, I can call it F1 if I want from here being subtracted. And then I add this one um, and all of these terms are all the same. So I just have this. So I've got K minus one of these because the sum has K minus one terms. I was subtracting K minus one of these, which are all, I can write these all as H of F1, but then I also have this one. So that combines for that. Um, and here's the thing. Okay, there's a lot of there's been a lot of things. Um, it's definitely true that the entropy of F1 is at most log two of n because it's it's a random vertex, um, and so the range its range has size at most n. So and that goes in the correct direction. So this is at least this. And now at this point, I mean, if you kind of you can probably just take my word for it more or less. But if you do the algebra here, like using the fact that um, I mean, yeah, t k2 of g, remember that's two times the number of edges over n squared. So two times eg is t k2 of g times n squared. You plug that in, um, do some manipulation, uh, get rid of the logs at some point because, you know, you don't need them. Um, log is an injective function or it's an increasing function. And at the end of the day, if you kind of get all the factors of n correct, it proves that uh, the homomorphism density of t into g is at least this thing, the edge density raised to the number of edges of g, or t. Um, at some point, you have to use that the number of edges is the number of vertices minus one in a tree. But yeah, so it all kind of, everything kind of cancels in exactly the right way, and it gives you the inequality that you want. Um, no, so we definitely, we needed this, the fact that it's a tree quite often because for example, um, so every so even earlier when we were doing this conditional entropy thing, we wanted to simplify this ugly expression, and we were able to do that because the choice of where each vertex mapped only depended on the parent. Now, if you have a cycle, imagine you try to you pick a root, and each thing depends on the parent in some sense, but then the last one is going to depend on two vertices, and that goes wrong. You know, things go wrong at that point. Yeah, parents only make sense in trees. And that was like, it was a sort of subtle up, subtle thing here, but it was like massively crucial. Although you can make this argument work more generally. So um, actually, so this, there was this, this uh, conjecture I've mentioned a few times. Um, oh, Sidorenko's conjecture, which is unknown, that THG is at least TK2G to the E of H, you know, if H is bipartite. So this is not known to hold, but for, I think, pretty much every single case where this is known, you can derive the proof through this kind of argument, um, this kind of entropy argument. 